Today I'm going to explain why on modern spinning wheels you need to increase the tension as the bobbin fills up in order to keep a consistent uptake or a twist per inch in your yarn. Before I do that though, I think that I have to explain a few core principles on how the modern flyer works. So this is a scotch tension spinning wheel, but the same principles will apply to Irish tension or double drive wheels, which are the three most common types of uh, spinning wheels out there. And this is an e-spinner, but a, a treadle wheel will sort of work the same way. Whether you're plying yarn, like I'm gonna be showing here, or you're making a single, what you need is you need to get the right amount of twist in the yarn, and then you need to get it put onto the bobbin. Uh, to do that, you adjust the tension. So I have the tension set very high right now. And what you're going to see is the bobbin. Uh, let's turn it a little bit. So the bobbin's not even going to be moving. And the yarn just goes directly onto the flyer. And if you look at this yarn, it's not twisted at all. There is a little bit of twist out here. You get one twist per rotation with this uh, setup where the bobbin isn't turning at all because you have a very high tension. So you'll see here there's effectively no twist on the singles and that's because you get twist when the bobbin spins. In the other extreme, let's loosen the tension and now I'm not gonna let the yarn go on the bobbin at all. So now the bobbin is rotating at the same speed as the flyer uh, because I'm not letting it go through. Um, I can allow it to go on and now it's sort of spinning, the, the flyer and the bobbin are spinning at slightly different speeds as the yarn is pulled on. And you can see in this mode, you get lots of twist in the yarn. So it's all about finding the right tension so that you get the right amount of uptake and you can sort of let the yarn go on to the bobbin with the right twist. Th this is sort of the pro one of the big hangups with uh, new spinners. It takes a long time to sort of get the feel to get the right amount of uh, twist in your yarn. So at the beginning, I promised I would explain why you need to increase the tension as the bobbin fills up. And now that we understand how a flyer works, I can show you that. So this little piece of yarn represents how much yarn it takes to go around the bobbin's core right here. It's a pretty short piece of yarn. And this longer piece of yarn represents going all the way around the bobbin, assuming it was uh, full of yarn. So we have two very different lengths of yarn here. Uh, this one's actually, for this bobbin, the longer one is about three times, 3.8 times as long. So why that matters is you're setting the tension to have a certain amount of uptake so that the bobbin rotates a certain uh, ratio of rotations relative to the flyer. And as the bobbin fills up, you're actually getting more and more yarn per rotation of the bobbin. So that's, that's why your tension is going to basically be increased. And it doesn't have to do with weight or anything. It has to do with the fact that the bobbin is getting fuller, which is increasing its effective diameter, which then requires more uptake. And I've seen people say, oh, this spinning wheel doesn't require it as much and things like that. And I believe that's true because I think uh, people will tend to notice it with e-spinners a bit more because they're smoother running. You get this feel for the uptake and then uh, when it changes, it's easier to notice versus a treadle where you're constantly changing the speed or there can be, you know, especially on older wheels, a little more vibration and things in the wheel and, and you just don't notice the changes. So you're more forgiving in how you uh, let the uptake affect how yarn goes onto the bobbin. But with an e-spinner, if you're not adjusting the tension as the bobbin fills up, then you're just adjusting how you let the yarn out of your hand because there's definitely gonna be uh, more and less pulling required as the bobbin fills up if you wanna keep your uh, yarn consistent. So I hope that makes sense to people. I've got a few diagrams that I'll put on the screen that sort of show the difference in length. Um, Another thing I thought I'd just mention while we're covering these topics is bobbin size. So everyone in that I've spoken to sort of expects you to say how many ounces you can fit on a bobbin. And so I do that. I say that the electric eel wheel six bobbins hold 
eight yard ounces of yarn and the nano bobbins hold two ounces, but that totally depends on how densely packed the yarn is. It would actually be nice if you could represent volumes of a bobbin, maybe in cubic millimeters. And I've actually calculated this before. I'll, I'll show a, um, some graphing that I've done. It, it's sort of, in addition to showing, uh, you can calculate the, the volume, and that's a much better way to calculate the capacity of a bobbin because it doesn't depend on the yarn density. It also shows that the volume increases exponentially, and that's because the volume of a cylinder increases with the radius squared. So even though this bobbin is, even though the nano bobbin isn't, uh, the diameter isn't nearly twice as big, it's actually more than four times the volume because of this uh, exponential increase in the size. So uh, making a, a little bit bigger bobbin like the six versus the electric EO wheel five, the bobbins aren't that much bigger, but the bobbins here will hold twice as much Yarn is sort of a, a traditional bobbin, and that's one of the reasons I ended up going to a slightly bigger bobbin. I was like, I might as well make them a little bit bigger, and then people will be able to hold a lot more yarn than your typical bobbin, and that's sort of what I've gone with uh, for the electric eel wheel six. As an engineer, I would like to see the capacity of a bobbin switch to like millimeters cubed or inches cubed, but I don't expect that to happen anytime soon. So I just uh, follow what people understand and I try to estimate about how much yarn that you can fit on a bobbin. But whenever you see like two, in, two ounce bobbins or four ounce bobbins or eight ounce bobbins, it's all an estimate because yarn density is gonna change. So just sort of letting you know um, sort of how that works. Hopefully you found this video interesting. Thanks for watching.